America, some students play catch-up or drop out and never get a second chance. As News 5's Carol White explains, some students do get a second chance, but not without paying a price. What is Odyssey? If you ask the students, they will say it's a journey. That is a journey of a different kind. They come to the Learning Center from either public or private schools because they need special help to perform at expected levels. Students usually stay one or two years depending on how long it takes them to master the skills. Then they return to their home schools. At Odyssey, the students go through educational assessment, which pinpoints problems. Odyssey Learning Center is a small, specialized private school dealing with students in first through eighth grade level, trying to provide an environment that can totally individualize for their academic needs. Odyssey is 100% mastery based. That means a student must perform 100% on a skill, such as spelling, before moving on to the next level. And although Martin says there's only self-competition at the school, there's still pressure to perform well. We do require 100% mastery, we talk, as we've talked about, so that does put a little pressure on the student that when he's doing or she's doing a task, that it must be done to 100% mastery. But we reduce the pressure by, number one, placing the student at a level in which they can succeed, and two, providing them the instructional help and supervision while they're working on a task so that they are able to reach that 100% mastery. Doing good on a skill and following the rules shows up on the Odyssey Great Race, and Although the game promotes competition, it also gives students a chance to gain free time based on their performance. And after winning the Odyssey Great Race, students can come here where they can seek their reward and play a friendly game of Nintendo. Cheryl White, News 5. And when we come back, the issue of flag burning heats up again. Some Gainesville and Alachua County residents make their stand. Welcome to Regency Educational Systems here in Dallas. Now shooting Regency Educational Systems building in Dallas. Try to give you a panoramic view. Nice underground parking area, as you can see. Now we'll go inside. Here we are in the entry office of Regency. a close-up view of Jack here working with his Aristotle. Jason, this is Jack, so that you know who we're talking Jason. about. And this is their classroom setup. Believe it or not, Jason, Jack's trying to get Aristotle set up. <laughs> Would you say they have just a little bit of mech software here? Notice there'll be one that we should recognize coming up right down here. Do y'all want to say anything to the camera while it's running? Tell me, Mom. See, uh, this is Mr. Scott here, and these are my class. Have you worked with Memory Master yet? Yes. What do you think of it? It's nice. You like it? You think you're yes. learning anything from it? Yes. Great. As soon as we get it working every day, though, right? So that you can use it all the time? Yeah. yeah. We love doing that. How old are you guys? No. You're 10? And is this your math class? No. No. What, is, what kind of class is this for? Reading. You're reading? So have you done any sight words on the computer yes. yet? Yes. What do you think of the speech? Is it too hard to understand or can no. you understand? No. 
speech is fine, huh? Yes. Okay. What would you change about the system if you could change anything Nothing. you could? Nothing. You see black and white. Not until you see it on your color TV. Sunrise in Colleen, Texas. Yeah. Everybody should be in. you will get a manual or copies of the parts of the manual. Very important, even though I know most people don't like to read manuals. It's really important with a system like Memory Master that there's a manual. I'm saying she's had it the whole time. Okay. It's really important that each of you read the manual, especially the management section, and find a half hour or an hour where you can sit down at the computer and go through the management tutorial to really learn how the management system works edit students, add teachers, add students, and so forth. But that's all part of the system. Until you put teachers and students in the system, you can't use the system. And you have to understand how that all works. Um, this is when you turn on, turn on the screen in the morning, you're going to get what's called the Corvus Systems uh, startup screen. And from this, you type MM for Memory Master, and that will take us into the startup menu that you see on the other two computers. What I've already mentioned earlier is the first thing you want to make sure is the date and time on the computers are correct. The time doesn't have to be to the exact minute, but it should be within a 5, 10, 15 minute range. You certainly want to make sure the date is correct. If the date is incorrect, you have to fix it. And the way you fix it is you go into the service menu. To go into a menu, you either type the letter that you see next to it, or you can use the arrow keys on the computer to go into it. If you would like, I'd like you to come up to this computer and go into the service menu. I'm going to let you set the clock on this one. Oh, right. Okay. So I can go down here and right. I can push return. Right. right. Now, does everybody know what the system password is? Mm -hmm. Oh, ELS. Yes. Okay. Yes. ELS until you change it. I don't it remember that. Password. That's why we're here today. <laughs> and then press return. Oh, yeah. Anytime, anytime the computer only requires a... Yes. Very good. See? You didn't even need to take notes on this. You have this already. Okay, I'm going to adjust the color just a little bit more. Here, that should be orange. Okay, if the clock is correct, of course, you don't have to do anything. If the clock is incorrect, you'll notice there's information here on the screen that shows arrow keys. So you don't have to... Don't worry about writing this down really. I'm just writing my password. Okay. Oh, okay. So I have to know and not okay. <laughs> You'll notice there's instructions on the bottom of the screen that shows arrow keys left and right and up and down. So if you want to move and go to the month or the day or the year, whichever one's wrong, you just use your arrow keys to go to wherever it's wrong. And to change it, you use the other arrow. So would you go up to the Did day what, of the week? What, say that again? I want you to go up to the day of the week. Okay. 
I'm under that. Oh, you mean up there. Okay. And I want you to change it to Thursday. So I, then I would go to this area. The other arrows, the side arrows. The side arrows. Right. To change oh, okay. means the left it. and right to move you up and down. And notice it's changing. Okay. It changes if you keep going, to Wednesday, you can so change forth, it to so any day you want. Okay. We want Tuesday, so we okay. leave it alone. And but then just keep it where I want it. I push return, right? If you want to set it to the time that you see here, you press return. Yeah, I see it says Return to set clock. Okay. <laughs> it's now set. This little blue box on the bottom right. The only right, thing that's set right now, though, is Tuesday, necessarily. No. What's no. set is this clock. See the, the whole clock? thing yes, is set. Yes, the down we'll arrow. If you want to set the other. Yeah, if you had to change. I know, like it's really though. bad. If you wanted to change the year, you go to the year, and you make it. Okay. okay. Now, we finished doing it, so... To exit, you press escape. So press the escape key. Thank you very much. I can now. sit there now. Well, it's okay. Again, it doesn't really matter. This is 3 o'clock and this is 3.02. The main thing is what the happened? They were the same. Well, we happen? changed it because it was set on 3 o'clock. We pressed return and that's what it set it at. We talked for a while oh, okay. and then two minutes you went by while it was going. Don't you okay. The, the service menu is where you will go by typing ELS, which we just did, to do things like setting the clock. If for some reason you had trouble with the RAM talker card, you would go and that allows you to install the RAM hardware card. You won't be doing update memory master because you don't have a 3.5 drive. That'll be something Nancy will be doing. You won't be doing backing up or store. That'll be something Nancy does. Uh, you, since you already have your school name in there, you won't be really doing anything in the maintenance menu because we don't want you to delete any of your users or history at this time. You don't need to set your school name unless you wanted to change the way it looks. It's fine the way it is. And none of these other things are applicable. So those are not things that you'll even mess with. So I'm going to come back to the first screen. And what you're mainly going to be interested in is going to the sign-on screen, which we're going to go into, and then we're going to come back and talk about management. Nancy likes me to go to the sign-on screen first so that you can see how the system works. Each day after you've gotten to the startup menu, the first thing you'll do is try to go to the sign-on screen. And it will ask you on one computer at the beginning of every day, is this the correct date? And of course, if it's not, that means you probably didn't look at this real closely, and you'd want to say no, and it'll automatically take you to setting the clock. Since it is correct, we'll type Y, and it will load a number of programs, and it'll put us at what we call the sign-on screen, where the kids would actually start to get involved with the program. All of your kids, once they're enrolled, they're enrolled with what's called a sign-on name. The sign-on name is what allows them to enter into the system and start working on the modules. Let me take just a second while this is loading and explain what Memory Master is, for those of you especially who are new and you haven't really been here. Memory Master is a system that was developed at a school I operate in Gainesville, Florida. My school's first through eighth graders for medial education, primarily geared to chapter one in learning disabled students. We found over the years that a lot of the kids were not mastering initial prerequisite memorization skills, the math facts, phonics, sight words, and spelling. And that it was a very difficult task to individualize those as a classroom teacher when you had kids working at all different levels and really deal with the memorization, which takes constant practice and review and some form of record keeping. Well, the computer seemed to provide a great solution. Not only did the kids enjoy doing it on the computer, but the computer had the capability of collecting and storing a tremendous amount of data and being able to allow students to be totally individualized for. So Memory Master deals with math facts, both add, subtract, and multiply, divide, phonics, all 115 phonemes, 650 sight words, which are made up of the Dolch, 220 Dolch words, the 600 Fry words, and the Madden Carlson words, and all those have been grouped together in the 650 basic words, divided from primer level through about beginning fifth grade level. And there's approximately 4,200 spelling words in the system, from first grade level words all the way through eighth grade level words. Well, depending on what you teach, if you're doing math or if you're doing language arts and reading, your students will be either assigned to all the modules, all math, phonics, sight words, and spelling, may only be assigned to math, or may be assigned to phonics and sight words and no spelling. These are all choices you'll end up making once you decide what you want to do with your students. The whole goal here is to get memorization with speed and accuracy of a skill. And the only way to do that is to have the child perform and make sure when they're performing that not only do they get it right, but they get it right fast enough. Well, to get it right fast enough, we have to have some way to keep track of time. 
Well, the computer, again, provides us that benefit so that you as a teacher do not have to sit there and watch everything the kid does. We can allow the computer to evaluate the student in terms of are they getting it right or wrong and how long it's taking them. But not only, which most computers can do in terms of programming, but what Memory Master goes beyond to do is it provides instruction to the students and it provides practice to the students so that they not only get evaluated, but when we identify errors, they can get instruction and practice what they're having problems with. As a teacher, you want to know how the kids are doing, especially if they're having problems in certain areas. So the system, because it's a database, provides you information through some reports that when we have the printer paper and the printer all working, are generated. There's a home study report that's generated each day of students on the system that can go home to the parents that will let the parents know what their kids are doing, how they're doing, and what items they need to be working on. Now you're going to say, well, a lot of these parents don't care, they're not going to be involved. Some will and some won't. As long as you provide the information, you've done your job. If they choose to participate, that's their choice. But they can't come back to you later and say, well, you never even gave me the information. You never even gave me a chance to participate. So if they don't choose to participate, that's a decision they make. But the home study report allows a student to take something tangible home every day that shows them how they've done and what items they need to concentrate and study. Well, we want to evaluate. I'm sorry, Did you want to mention that section in the study guide that goes home to parents, explains the whole system? In the parent manual, I mean, if they're right. In your teacher <laughs> manual, there is a section called the parent manual. The parent manual is about, oh, seven or eight pages long. And it's designed specifically to summarize what Memory Master is and what their kids are doing when they participate with Memory Master. It also sort of provides them their role in the system. In other words, we don't expect parents to be teachers. We expect parents to be parents, to make sure their kids are practicing or studying and to know what to do. So the parent manual is designed for that purpose, to inform them what the program is, to let them know how they can be involved. And when they get this computer sheet, they need to know what that computer sheet is and what it means. So it shows them the computer sheet and it defines all the parts of the computer sheet to them. Print out for you every performance of that child and it will show you, let's say they're having trouble with the spelling word, and I'll get my book out in a minute and show you some of these reports. It will actually show you how they misspell the word. Now, you don't want to have to sit and watch all these kids with every spelling word and worry about that. You really only want to worry about the kids that are having a problem. So that's what the system will do. If the kid's having a problem, it will identify that student and what the problem is and what the item is. Then you use your expertise as a, as a teacher to go in and provide some additional help or remediation or some suggestions to get them over the hump. And that's how you can help them grow and learn. Now, what the kids will see once they sign on, and we're just going to do demo student here. I'm going to type student in. Whatever their sign-on name is, I have to type it correctly. And notice I've typed it in all caps. If I type in all caps, I always get this message because we don't want the caps lock key to be down. Because kids that do spelling, if they were typing the spelling words, they'd all be capitalized and be counted wrong. So we identify if this key is down or not because a lot of programs require the key to be down by if it turns out they've typed their name in all caps. All they have to do is depress the key, which nuts it up, and they type the letter Y to show that they've done that, and then it goes on. Then it looks in their file and finds their real name. In this case, my real name is Demo B Student, even though all I typed initially was student. But it goes and finds my full name. Then I type Y, and it goes out and looks at what this student has been assigned to. If this student was only assigned to do math, then this would only show math. But this student's assigned to all four modules. Some of your first graders might not be assigned to spelling, so they'd only be assigned to three modules. So whatever you have them assigned to, which is all part of the management system, is what would show up here. And we're going to go into sight words here and, and uh, see how that works. And what will happen is first we're going to go through what's called the evaluation stage. We have five or ten items. In this case, we have five items. And we're going to see how many of these five we know. Enjoy. Is that enjoy? Ever. Is it ever? Mm -hmm. I'm going to miss it. Then it's supposed to press, press the space bar. That's how the computer knows if the child knows what the word is or not. And that's why that space lights up on the screen. Here. Uh, 
now it's going to give us our results. Notice it's green and it's the correct word. Yeah. Notice it's green and it's the correct word. All three were the correct answer and they were cued. And in stage one, that's the way it is. If I can master it in stage one, and in order to get mastery, I have to respond before the blue disappears. Oh, okay. Blue is mastery, orange is time limit. But remember, if you know it, you should be able to do it immediately. See how fast I am? You Trust me. Video games, that doesn't work unless you're incredibly fast. And kids can sit there and do that. If I can master it at this stage, what happens is it moves up a stage and it starts to add in distractors. See, now there's a distractor, there's no green box, but I still have that. Okay, so it moves up. Notice there's no green bar for that. Your draft results show a rating of expert. Expert? See how good we did? There are four levels. It goes beginner, rookie, advanced, and expert. We didn't do too good with CAP. These three words are going to be printed out in the home study report, which is what we want the student to practice and work on. We hope they'll make flashcards and do studying as we describe in the manual. What's critical here is it's okay for kids to have errors. It's something you have to make sure the kids understand. This is not a system where everything's always right. It's evaluating you, so when it evaluates you, it's probably going to find that sometimes there's things you don't know. When we find something you don't know, we'll provide you instruction, we'll provide you practice, we're going to give you this piece of paper that has all the information on it. Now we want to know is, will you go home or in your class or somewhere, practice this so that the next time you come back and do the sight words on the system, can you demonstrate mastery of that item? And we call that study accuracy. Study accuracy, if you remember on that first screen, it gave us how many incorrect, too slow, and so forth, and it had a speedometer, and then it had something called study accuracy. And what study accuracy represents are those items that I missed the previous day, which is never more than three, do I come back the next day and demonstrate mastery? Mastery is being able to do it correctly and with speed, that quick speed that you saw going across there. If I had three items assigned the previous day and I come back and master those three items, my study accuracy is three out of three. If I come back and get zero out of three, what does that tell you? No. If you have zero out of three, that means I didn't get any of the ones that I had missed the previous day right today, which means I didn't grow at all. I didn't demonstrate any form of learning. And so what we're after here is growth and learning. No matter what my errors are, that doesn't make any difference. It's okay to have errors, but can I learn from those errors and start demonstrating mastery? So that's what study accuracy is, and that's why it's an important feature of the system. Now, I'm not going to go through all the other modules. I just want you to see one, but they have all four, and all of them work pretty much the same. First, you're evaluated. If you have any errors, you receive instruction, and then you get practice. If you don't have any errors, then you don't get instruction, you don't get practice. And if you're too slow, which can happen, uh, too slow pushing the sight words or math facts, and that's going to happen a lot at the beginning. Kids take time to get adjusted to anything. Sometimes they'll have to get adjusted to the speech. You will probably have to get adjusted to the speech if you haven't really heard much computer speech before. And it's okay that it sometimes doesn't sound the way you would like it to, like it to sound. It's going to sound a little funny. But you believe it or not, the kids will probably adjust to it faster than you will. But it may take a couple of weeks, so they need to understand that it's okay if they're a little confused at the beginning or they miss a word because they didn't really understand what it was saying. It's okay. Because once they miss it, they're going to see what the word really was, and they can then learn after the fact. And these are all in the manual where it talks about introducing memory master to students, and that's a section that's real important. So you can feel comfortable and your students can feel comfortable when they sit down. Because you don't want to just go enroll a bunch of teachers and a bunch of students and then say, okay, Come sit down over here and sign your name and start. If they, it's like if I did that to you and I didn't give you any further instruction here and you didn't read the manual, you'd be lost. You wouldn't really know what was going on or why this was happening. So we're going to, if I needed to exit out, you had a fire drill or something, you could either leave this at this point or you could type zero if you didn't want the kid to finish. And again, what's the system password? Yeah. ELS. We type ELS and that will automatically quit the student at this point in time. 
if they have four, mo four modules they work on, when they finish the fourth module, it would automatically do this. And when it says you are finished for now, which it's saying, I turn the sound down, it says you are finished for now. When they get the message, you are finished for now, they're finished, they can quit, take their headphones off and go on to something else. Okay, I had an experience in the middle of a fire drum, and they were in the middle of a module. Just have to let them leave and let it run through. What will happen when it finishes the module, if it's the last one, it'll just quit on its own. If it's not the last one, it'll go back to their menu and it'll just sit there beeping every so often. Okay, but it's telling that child that they need to study all those words that evening. Unfortunately, if you if they have to leave and they're in the part of the evaluation and they leave during that, they'll end up missing. There's nothing I can do about that. I mean, you have to assume that you don't have fire drills every day. And it should be a rarity more than a like common thing. Oh, yeah, you can just put a note on it. I mean, but again, it's like what I try to explain to all these kids that work on it. Even if you miss them all one day, it's okay. First of all, they're never going to have more than three items assigned even if they missed all ten. So it's never going to really hurt them. They'll never have more than three items assigned. And so now when this comes back to the sign-on screen, once one student finishes, the next student can come sign on. Each module will average three to five minutes. So depending on how many modules the student's in, we'll give you some idea of how much time to allow for your students. Excuse me, the three to five minutes is even if they're making incorrect responses? Yeah, that's why I said three it's to not five. longer than five minutes now. Usually, uh, spelling could be maybe six or seven minutes depending on a student. But mm -hmm. I would say three to five minutes. The module summary report, which you can run when we talk about reports, will show you how long the kids have been on the system, what their average amount of time in each module is, and then you'll get a better idea what your kids are spending. But from all the kids we've worked with, three to five minutes is usually about correct for each module. Math and spelling being the longer of the modules. Okay, I'm going to exit out of this so we can look at some of the management section. And Again, this is something you're going to learn a lot more about when you sit down with the manual and go through the tutorial, but so I can give you sort of a preview. To go to management, I can type M, or I can just come down to this line and press return. And we know our system password, so I won't even ask you again. This now gives us our management menu. The management menu allows you to add or edit students, add or edit teachers, and to go into reports. And I'm going to go into reports first. Because one of the things you really want to do, I don't know if you've started students on the system or not, but once you've added the number of students, you want to, on the computer that's hooked to the printer, you want to go into reports and print out a user list and placement settings. Because a user list will list everybody that the computer thinks is on the system. We want to make sure that agrees to what you want it to be. Because if a teacher is missing or students are missing or the students there that shouldn't be there, you will have to go into add or edit students and make some changes. Now right now, at least for about a two week period, you're limited to 200 total users on your system, which includes teachers and students. As soon as you come close to 200, you can't add any more. Okay, and in about two weeks, Nancy will be coming back with an update where we're gonna fix that problem for you. You'll be able to add up to 1,000 users. I doubt you'll do that because the system couldn't even handle 1,000 users. But you'll certainly be able to add 250, 300, however many you need to put in there for the way you're adding them. But you want to print it. Now, a user list could be printed to the screen or the printer. If you want it printed to the printer, you're going to have to be on the computer that's hooked to the printer. If you don't really care if it gets printed out and you just want to look at the user list, which we just press return on user list, and what it will tell us is, first, these are the teachers you guys currently have in your system. And if I wanted to look at a certain teacher's students, I would go to that teacher and press return. If I wanted to look at all of them, I would hit all teachers. Is there somebody we'd like to look at just for the heck of it? How about Barbara Math, Barbara Carroll Math? And we're just going to look at her, so I do selected teachers. Look at this. When you run a user list, it will print out each teacher you have on the system and which students you have in there. If you look at this and find errors, you're going to need to go in and make some changes. It looks like there might be a little some error and that might not be very important. But you'll look at this and you'll find if you have errors or not. And then you can just page through. This teacher, that's all the students they have, so that's what shows up. If I had done all the teachers and students, all of them would show up. The other report is called placement settings. Now, when you get into placing your students, you're going to decide, are they going to be in math only for your class? Or are they going to be in phonics, sight words, and spelling, and math, or whatever? Now, the system has what's called defaults. So based on the grade that the student is enrolled in, it will automatically do things based on those defaults. You may not want to use those defaults. So the 
on your teacher screen, when we, when we go back and show you that, you'll have to set that to the way you want it. And again, that's all described in the management system. Back to what Jack was bringing up, Memory Master is most effective if it's used as frequently as possible. And what I mean by frequent, I don't mean once a week. Once a week is sort of a waste of time. It's not going to have much effect at all. Students need, at minimum, to be on Memory Master three days a week. Preferably, they need to be on there daily. Mm -hmm. And since we're only talking, if they did every module, probably 15 to, at most, 20 minutes at a time, you have to sort of make some judgments on how many kids you're dealing with, how many computers, and what your status is. But if you're only going to put the kids on there once a week, you're going to run into a lot of problems of saying, well, this doesn't really do anything. This doesn't accomplish anything. It's a waste of my time. And it is. It's a waste of time to do it one day a week. Uh, I wouldn't, well, I can't say it's a waste of time totally. It's better than not doing it at all. But you're certainly not going to gain much benefit for you or the students if it's only done once a week. So you need to, I'm sorry. We may have to do some creative scheduling. We can't even get on these more than once a week with, because we only have, we have four classes, we have four, four, you know, days of the week that we can work with. That's why I said we're going to create a schedule. Well, I'm, I'm and gonna, then if you work more than that, then you can't get anything else done. If I, like if I take more than one, one or two days on the computer. How much time do you have with each of your 30 classes? 30 minutes. 30 minutes every day? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, just think, if you put them all on the computer, you wouldn't have to do anything with them except supplement them. I'd get in trouble. Right there, right? <laughs> well, I'll let, on the computer I'll let your chapter one program and you work that out. I'm just trying to make a point so that you know is that the more frequently a kid can use the system, the more effective it's going to be. The less frequent, the less effective. It's not going to provide them much of a benefit, and you're not going to be as happy with the system, which would seem sort of silly to have it. So I, I make that point. I think it's important. Back to this reports menu, you had user list, you had placement settings, and you had this thing called module summary. Now module summary is a report, I think seeing is better than talking, so I'm going to start passing out some of these so they can see them. Okay, these are maybe at the end of each class or uh, possibly at break time or whatever when you have the computer next to the printer available and you go over type the word which I'm going to show you reports on the sign on the screen and when you type the word reports it allows for the home study reports to be printed through the printer and what's being passed around now is a copy of a home study report and on they that home these daily when they do these on there yes that's what goes home to How the long parents will it take to print out Depends long. on five or six. Long. Oh, not five to print or out six. five or I'm six. I'm saying if you did it after every class, or you, you could take it home. Figure one something. report takes about 30 seconds. You're going to waste a lot of paper, too, if you have this much to report, and the rest is empty but paper. But see, she's doing everything. She's just second like grade, so she can't. She reading and she math. Won, I, I only do reading, reading and math. math. But still, it's going to be just like that. No, it's not. If she's doing three modules, it'll fill up the paper just like this does. No, I had three modules, and I, I ran that home study report, and yeah. I had that much. I could bring it to you and show it to you. Please, I'd like to see yeah, that before we finish, because it has to take up. Unless they got them all right, if they got them all right, of course, it would show yeah, everything it except it. the items assigned. Yeah. Because so. that was one of my questions. I said, I'm wasting an awful lot of paper, and Mrs. Carroll's math teacher, the same thing was happening to her. Well, you, she was on doing it at the end of every single class. You can't get them to them that day. Right. It's so it's, it's preferable to do it at the end of each class. But what you do with this screen here is type the word reports. This is all in your manuals that I wanted to show you here. So we type reports. Now we're not hooked to a printer, so we can't print anything out. You always have to put the system password because we don't want kids or just anybody trying to do things from time to time. Now, if there are just home study reports, then you see this one line up here that's, that says home study reports. You also see a line that says change headers and footers. If you notice in the report that was being passed around, there's a line at the top of our report where we put task master, a behavior information, and some information about home study. It's strictly optional whether you want to put any information on the, any of the top two lines or the bottom two lines of your report. If there's a parent meeting or there's some special event, you may want to put a note at the bottom of their sheet, or you may want something always to appear like we do at the top of their sheet. So you if you want to do that. See how he's put behavior at the top? With task you, You've got right several here. things up there, but one of the things is behavior. For those of you who want to document the fact that you are sending home 
um, behavior management or you're communicating with the parents, you could type in behavior and leave that blank there. And you could decide on your own system whether you write, want to write in, in a good or excellent or put a sticker or draw on a smiley face or just write needs improvement. And if you're doing that at the end of every class, I think you'll be able to manage six to eight students to write one word in or one coded symbol so the parents would know. Or a little hand is. stamp that you might have. Yes, this will be a lot easier once we get our other computers. Right now it's hard when we just have these. It is, okay. but we'll, just, we'll eventually get the lab, you know, a full yeah. computers. These are strictly optional. You can either use them or not use them. If you want to use them, you have to go into headers and footers and then type what you want. It's like any word processor, you type things in there. I might want to put some asterisks up there and I say, have a nice day. Okay, then I want to put some exclamation marks. I didn't want that thing. Okay, but I want that centered. So the way I center is I just come back over to the beginning, I use a space bar, and I put it where I want it. And I can put it wherever I want. If I want to save that, I do open Apple S. Notice at the bottom, open Apple S to save it. If I don't want to save it, I, get, I just escape out. Now you can either save it permanently, means that until you change it again, it will always be there. So if you had something you always wanted to have on your sheet, you'd save it permanently. If you had just a message because of a parent meeting or a holiday and you wanted it only to appear today, then you would not save it permanently and would only print for that one day. Okay? So we're going to exit out of here because we're not going to print. Oh, before I do, after your kids are on the system for a while, what we call teacher summaries will start to be generated. And this is a teacher summary. What the teacher summary is, instead of again back to you having to worry about all your kids and what each one's doing, this pinpoint any particular student that you have assigned to you that's having a problem. Not only will it tell you which module they're having a problem with, but it'll tell you which item they're having a problem with. As well as those kids that complete reviews and they should maybe get a little extra pat on the back or some kind of reinforcement. So it reports that information to you so that you can then zero in to help that child more or you may want to get bold as you feel more comfortable with the system and go into some of these other reports that I mentioned where you can actually get a printout and see the performance of the child. If I can find one real quick. Here's the, here's the kind of report as you feel more comfortable with the system that you can do. Say this word the child was having some problems with these spelling words. So you wanted to actually do a printout and see all the performances of that child. It will show you that information and it will actually show you what they did wrong, how they misspelled it so that you can then go in and help them with their problems. And that's the kind of power that Memory Master has. But you have to get to the point you feel comfortable and then go in to look at that. But even if you don't go into that report, the teacher's summary will give you enough information on a daily basis of particular kids that are having particular problems that if you see their name repeat a couple of times with the same item, you may want to provide some form of intervention. If there are, if there are any teacher summaries, they will appear on this screen. And it will be another line here that will say, to print teacher summaries. And then there will be a third line that will say, print both reports.